Hi everyone, this is Megan Wagner here, and I'm, I'm here once again with my friend Steve Pope, who has agreed to do another course for us, another mystical Hebrew class, which I'm really excited about, Steve. This is gonna be a, a 10 week course on the Song of Songs. So some people may have heard of that, the name of that book before. Um, I know that you're going to uh, be bringing it to us in a very unique way. So can you describe what the Song of Songs is and what the mystical meaning is behind the Song of Songs? Yeah, um, well, Song of Songs was only just really um, included into the biblical canon. Uh, it was seen as very controversial. Um, it's been described by uh, a couple of my teachers who are from the Hebraic Kabbalah um, tradition as the greatest and most important Kabbalistic work um, of all time. So that's how they saw it. I was using the past tense because they're no longer incarnate. Um, that's how they see it. So it was seen as um, with great reverence and um, great beauty um, and incredible poetry. So Hebrew poetry is very um, deep. Mm. And the first thing to say about it, although it's a nice, I think, translation, Song of Songs, uh, gives us the idea of uh, all songs coming from the one source, uh, everything being a song of life, everything that exists being uh, a note in the, in the song. Mm -hmm. um, it, in the Hebrew, it, it means quintessence of essences and um, all quintessence of quintessences. So the title of the piece is not the Song of Solomon, it's the Song of Songs. Um, the first verse says, Shiri Hashirim, which is translated Song of Songs, quintessence of all essences. Hmm. Asher Sholoma. Now, Asher Sholoma means this is her peace in simple Hebrew, but it's the peace of Asherah. So the name Asherah has the word or the equation shalom, peace, uh -huh. inserted into it. Okay. And so this marks out as a part of the feminine mysteries. Okay. Um, and it is really a poem, um, a song, uh, which would have been chanted and taught. Um, and it, it, it's like a prompt the written text for celebration of life, uh, which would have been taught by women. Mm -hmm. um, and it's basically the enlightenment from the perspective of the feminine, mm -hmm. uh, or through, through the, the um, vision and song, dance, rhythm, very creative, sensual, alive, connecting with the earth and the heavens. Mm. Um, so it's asking us to become this conscious conduit between heaven and earth or to consciously connect heaven and earth whilst we are incarnate in our physical forms. Right, because whenever I've read parts of the Song of Songs, it feels to me like this giant love story. It's very sensual, very sexual, and so yes. I was wondering, is it also, are there some of the, the, like the sacred marriage mysteries woven into the Song of Songs? Totally, yes. It's about um, sexual awakening, uh, which is spiritual awakening. So spiritual awakening and sexual awakening uh, in a young woman who becomes um, an adult in the feminine mysteries who becomes a woman. Mm -hmm. it's, um, so the 
it's about the raising up of those energies from the base of the spine and the genitals of vagina in to the womb and then bringing that up into the heart through the breasts into um, the neck and shoulders opening the pineal gland um, so it's an inner marriage and then there's the outer marriage with the earth with the solar system with the cosmos and with a male counterpart mm -hmm. wow that's been so demythologized hasn't it uh, just as you're talking i'm thinking wow I, I wish these mysteries were taught in sunday school or temple or yeah, yeah and so it's it's i think you're going to help bring us back to the original dancing with life and so that rather than feeling shame or a distortion around all of, you know awakening the kundalini energy it's it's kind of re-mythologizing it back to its original beauty and song so I, i'm really excited about that part of it to to really clear away the distortions for us so that we're we feel free to do these inner sacred marriage mysteries and to dance with life absolutely it's essential and um many of these although it's been badly translated people have still been able to pick up on the deeper sense of what we're talking about now um so it's not been completely lost and a lot of the very um sensitive information because it would have been suppressed by the patriarchal right and militarized mentality um that was around over the last three or four thousand years it's been around and has attacked and suppressed the feminine as a way of cutting the connection between um our incarnate selves and, and our spiritual bodies wow okay so this is a uh, part of the song in fact talks about restoring and returning return restore return restore so that's one of the chants in the in the song um and it's very much holistic there's no separation between the um the divine and the spiritual the soul and the mind body they're all seen as a seamless garment and lived um so as the heroine of the peace awakens she connects with all of life and she realizes the glory of god in everything mm. in uh as she walks the earth wow it's really a song about embodied presence like how to really bring our spiritual nature to the world and interact in that way it sounds like yeah i can just briefly um go through so a praise of say the opening uh, eight or nine verses so the it starts off with a sharer who is the proto semitic creator creatress mm -hmm. so the original creator was was feminine and called a sharer um who is this um divine fire mm. um that becomes alive in the cells of the dancer of life so um the asherah tree then um holds all the aspects of the goddess and one of those aspects as we will get on to was um is mary magdalene or mara magdalena um so this is hidden in the translations and scholars you you can't find any scholar that picks up on this okay um but it, it starts with um the awakening uh where she basically says that her lips are inflamed with fire and calls the world the beloved mm. um and it's talking about finding the good wine through the heart through the um energies rising up from the vagina into the breasts mm -hmm. and filling her whole body and 
So her love and desire is for the divine spiritual self to incarnate into form. Wow. And then she is invited into a religious school of the king and she rejects that, choosing instead to become a Shekinai or a Shekini, which is a, the personalized Shekinah. So to realize the Shekinah in herself and to become that. It's not seeing the Shekinah as an external entity or something outside of her. Um, and then they talk about the awakening of the daughters of Jerusalem, um, bringing the light of peace and the teachings of peace into the world. Wow. And um, she keeps watch, which is a name given to um, Magdala, um, which right. is the watchtower. Mm -hmm. So that's intimated in the opening verses. And uh, she becomes what they, they call the breath of love. Um, now this mix is really some of the, um, the letter number sequences of Asherah with okay. the word love in Hebrew, which is Ahava. And is called the pasture of the nefesh, the pasture of the soul. And in this part of the text, she's enwrapped in the um, ehir consciousness, the I am consciousness. So then she's called the mother of Gnosis, the bright and beautiful amongst women, um, which is also named as Shekinoth. So Shekinoth is plural then of the devotees who are Shekinai, of the Shekinah. <clears throat> so this is brought out um, and they really together the, the, the group of women form the tabernacle. They're mm -hmm. called the, the tabernacle that nourishes life. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're the tent of meeting, they become the mercy seat and the tent of meeting. And um, so literally they realize the, themselves as the temple. Um, and from then on it talks about the awakening of the sexual energies um, or the kundalini energies that are amplified into higher and higher consciousness of unification with with all that is wow steve this sounds amazing i mean it sounds like a combination of the sacred marriage mysteries internal sacred marriage yeah. mysteries the feminine mysteries and then obviously for men and women um and then yeah. how to how to really be an embodied presence and how to um it sounds like it's it's an actual like it has what i'm hearing is that it has um practices or ways through chanting, meditating on the words, uh, yeah. breathing, it, it, it really is, you're also going to be giving us some tools to awaken this level of consciousness so that we can experience the, that ecstatic love of the universe. That's what excites me about it. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. And you bring up a very important, well, several in what you've just said, but one I'll just pick up on, which is the, it's for men and women. So it's an initiation for both men and women. Okay. Um, yes, it is a part of the feminine initiations for women, and it's how um, fully realized or messianic consciousness or Christos consciousness is embodied through the perspective of a woman, but it's also for men. And one of the things that we have to understand is this an initiation for men because of, um, for the man to become truly masculine, he has to accept into himself the uh, feminine initiations. Great. Well, I'm so looking forward to this class. I hope everyone enjoys it. It's a 10 week class. We're going to go deep, deep into all of these concepts and learn some techniques to awaken this ecstatic consciousness.
So thank you so much, Steve. This is going to be a great class. You're welcome. Thank you.